All right, guys. So now that we learn about current and a resistor as a device, then we can tackle direct current circuits or DC circuits. Generally, you can think of like DC circuits are pretty much a basic part of every electronic device that you see around you. Remote controls, TV, cars, and things like that. All of them have some form of DC circuitry inside. So in order then for the, you know, for the current to go through your circuit, we need some kind of a device that can act like a source where some kind of maybe like a chemical energy can be converted into electric energy. That means a device that can provide energy to your circuit, you know, one that doesn't really run out very quickly. And those types of sources are known as EMF sources. So a source of EMF, electromotive force, is an entity that can maintains the constant voltage of a circuit. We learn about batteries and capacitors as source of energy, right? That can provide a voltage to a circuit. Capacitors don't really are, you know, can, can considered EMF source. They cannot be considered EMF source because they cannot maintain the constant voltage to a circuit. It does, you know, have some energy, right, stored, but once you use it, it's pretty much gone. EMFs are like batteries, power supplies, and things like that, that can provide constant voltage by, you know, for example, the battery by creating those chemical reactions because they have a lot of chemicals inside um, and that chemical energy then can be converted to electric energy. All right, now, so that means in our, exp in, in our you know, examples and things like that, we can think of like, let's say we are dealing with a source of EMF. So source EMF provides voltage and it can then provide, you know, if you connect it to some kind of like a device, like a resistor, it can provide a current running through the circuit. All right. So here's an example of um, a battery that is connected to the terminal, you know, to the, to the resistor. That means resistor connected to the terminals of the battery. Okay. So there is a little more to the battery than we've, looked at before, because as I mentioned, the battery has a lot of chemicals inside. So this is an EMF source. So this is an EMF source. That means there are a lot of chemicals inside and those chemicals provide chemical energy, which have been converted to electric energy. But every time those you know, chemicals are used, right? So every time those chemicals are used, well, they don't just disappear, right? They are left inside the, the battery, but they are no longer useful because once you take chemicals, create a chemical reaction, there are leftover chemicals. Well, those leftover chemicals eventually, you know, build up what we call internal resistance inside your battery. So now what we have here is this. So this V battery that we used to call before as the voltage provided by the, by the battery to, to the external circuit, is now we can think of like as a terminal voltage. That's the voltage between the terminals of your battery. But now how much battery generates energy or voltage, right? Or the potential difference is not exactly the same as gonna be the terminal voltage if there is an internal resistance. Because let's say the battery generates 10 volt potential difference. The internal resistance can then dissipate some of it before even it becomes available to your external circuit like this resistor R. So this is resistor R right now is an external resistor connected to the terminal of the battery. So this is sometimes can be known as a load resistor. So this is a load resistor. Then somewhere inside, you can think like there's an internal resistor within, within the battery. All right. So we usually use lowercase r to represent that internal resistor and Vt to represent that terminal voltage. So then the EMF, which is in a way, amount of voltage, amount of potential that generated by the battery because of those reactions, chemical reactions, things like that. So you can think of like, let's say, terminal voltage will be equal to that EMF, which we use, you know, the symbol to represent it will be equals to the EMF only when there is no internal resistance. 
or there is no current running through the circuit. So here's kind of like what we have. So you can see like this is a little bit, you know, different diagram representing like inside of the battery. So that's inside of the battery. So look, think, you can think of like, this is the negative terminal of the battery and this is the positive terminal of the battery. Okay, so then this load resistor connected to the negative and positive terminals. Okay, so there is a current from the positive terminal back to the negative terminal. So there's a current running through the resistor, but then how much voltage will be available to this external resistor, right? This load resistor will depend on terminal voltage. That means you have this EMF, which is the amount of voltage in, in a way, amount of voltage it is provided by the battery. So you can think of like, that's kind of what we, what we use for the um, amount of voltage generated, created by the battery. So here's EMF. But then there's an internal resistor. We know that resistor is a device that dissipates energy. So then what we can say here is, this is how much it generates then minus how much is taken away by the internal resistor, then the difference is how much is available to this external resistor. That means by the time, let's say you are looking at voltage across this external resistor, it will be how much generated, how much dissipated within the you know, battery itself, and VT is then the amount of voltage provided to that external resistor. All right, so again, for example, if the EMF is 10 volts, but then internal resistor, let's say dissipates two volts, that means, you know, there's a two volt drop, then external resistor will only get eight volts. That will be the terminal voltage. Oops. So that will be like a terminal voltage available to the, to the R, which is the load resistor. So that's why we have to kind of like take into account, you know, EMF, which is amount of, voltage that is gener generated by the, the battery and how much internal resistance it has. Over time, EMF, which is its ability to maintain the constant voltage generally decreases and internal resistor actually over time increases for a battery and then battery goes bad. When we say battery goes bad, that means it cannot provide enough terminal voltage because things like this, if over time this becomes nine and this becomes five, for example, then all you have is four volts. That's it. So when it was brand new, it was generating 10 volts and when there was no internal resistor. Now, because of the internal resistor, you know, which is large enough right now, you only have four volts available to the, to the uh, external load, which is generally could be maybe not enough. So that's why the battery then goes bad. So if it's a light bulb, it will be then dim compared to it was before when it was bright. So mu much more dimmer, you know, light bulb that because not enough, you know, voltage provided by the battery. Then you throw it away and get a new one with the smaller internal resistor, right? Just, you know, use it in your, you know, remote control or a flashlight and thing like that until it all will also eventually goes bad. All right, so let's look at in terms of then what we have. Here's the equation for the terminal voltage. So equals EMF minus this I times R is just nothing but the voltage of the in internal resistor. So the current through the internal resistor times resistance, IR, right? Ohm's law. So where lowercase r represents the internal resistance of that, you know, battery. All right, so now think like this. What we have here is we're gonna look at as we go around that circuit. That means here's my, generally what we do, we say here's the battery. This is the EMF port of that. And then here's the internal resistor. So then let's say more or less, you can think of like, this is point A, this is point B. So then this is point C. And this is, uh, let's see, this is then E, which from here to there, sorry. So let's say I can, I can say that this is, everything, all of that within my battery, okay. And then going from, let's say A and E are the two ends of the, of the battery, okay. So then we have then a resistor. 
and then you have then a b c sorry this should be d then e and f is across the across the resistor so that's that's basically my circuit so a battery and a resistor technically like like you know a, a load resistor and you know connected to the to the battery but the battery has an internal resistor so pretty much that's what you have now imagine that we start from somewhere over here that point is a point connected to the you know negative terminal of the battery so it has no voltage if you remember before that we also would say that you know the negative terminal of the battery has zero voltage that means things like this a charge right here some kind of charge right there at point a then what happens is that charge goes through the battery and comes out that means we can look at in terms of what is the there's the potential right what is the potential at different points of in our circuit so at point A, there will be no voltage because that's the negative term of the battery. So our graph will present that right here at point A, we start with zero voltage. This is voltage as a function of, let's say, your circuit. Like we're going to do as a function of time as, your, as, the, as, as that charge kind of goes through your circuit. So think like this. Then this is point A. Then the charge goes from point A to the, which is the negative terminal of the battery. As it goes, not the, no, basically as it goes to that uh, negative terminal, then goes to the sort of like a positive. So this is basically what we can say that that's the part of the battery that generates this EMF. Okay, that means when you go from negative to positive terminal of the battery that, you know, within the, within the battery that generates that EMF. So that means its potential will increase from zero to EMF volley. That means as, as you go from point A to point B, you can see, right? So this is point A and this is point B on the other side where, you know, we put the positive. So again, this is negative, this is positive. This is, this is within the battery, okay? So then we can say that as you go from A to B, you are given as a charge, right? A potential equal to the maximum value that it can generate, which is maximum value of the EMF. So then once the charge gets to this point B, its potential, is equal to the EMF value. All right, so all, the, all those lines are straight wires, those straight lines, right, are perfect conductors, means that there is absolutely no potential drop when charge is moving through those conductors. That means as it goes through those conductors or inside, right, there's absolutely no drop of potential. The only drop of the potential, let's say, is, is it, as it goes through the some kind of resistor. But so what we have here is now imagine that charge here is at point B and it gained potential of EMF. So as it goes through those, you know, wires, right? Conducting ideal wires all the way to point C, which is where this, you know, a resistor is, right? You know, where that resistor is. Let's see, maybe my graph is a little bit different. So this is point C and this is point D. Okay. So then going from B to C, right? So this, this, in this region, going from point B to C, it's ideal wire. There's absolutely no potential difference. That means, you know, you still have the same EMF potential. As you go to point C, and then let's say this charge goes through the internal resistor, some of the potential will be dropped. So this represents the drop in the potential, which means that potential, you know, at point D is less than potential at point C. And this represents how much potential drop you will have. So the voltage, which is the potential difference, let's say between C and D, is equal to the current through that internal resistor times internal resistor value. Then this will tell you how much potential was dropped. It's equals to this, this I times R. That's the potential difference between those two points or the voltage drop you know, through the internal resistor. Then you can see, right, when it gets to this point D, which is right here, this is then amount of voltage going to be available to this load ex external resistor. That means at this point, so then you can say this is VT, which is EMF minus voltage across internal resistor. Then that charge can move through the ideal wires until it gets to point E. Point E then, which is right here, then it has to go through the external resistor. As it goes through the external resistor, there's more potential drop. Because one thing I know here is this. At point A, there was a 
zero voltage. A is connected to F. That means they're directly connected to one another by an ideal wire. That means point F should also have zero voltage or the zero potential. So whatever potential the charge has at point E, it has to drop everything to zero by the time it gets to point F. And that's what you can see, right? Or the voltage now goes all the way to zero by the time it gets to point F. Because point F is connected to the negative terminal of the battery, it has to have a voltage of zero. All right, so more or less, this is pretty much what happens in your circuit. That means as the, you know, as you go sort of like, let's say between the terminals of EMF source, negative positive of the, you know, EMF, there is a gain of voltage always. As you go from negative to positive, there's always a gain. But every time you go, you know, let's say through a resistor, as you, as you go through a resistor, there's always gonna be voltage drop, okay? So that's kind of what we're gonna be able to see then in the future examples. All right, so EMF is equivalent to open circuit voltage. So this is the terminal voltage when no current is in the circuit. That means you can say that terminal voltage is equals to EMF minus current times R sub I, which is voltage across the internal resistor. Now you can see, right, if your, if your battery is not connected to anything, so then current equals zero. Well, if the current equals zero, this is equals to zero. So your terminal voltage equals to your EMF. But as soon as you make a connection to some kind of external load, that's no longer the case. So then terminal voltage must be calculated from the how much it generates, how much it dissipated inside the battery. And then VT is the amount is available to the external load. Okay, so you can see, right? The actual potential difference between the terminals of the battery depends on the current in the circuit. Okay, so the terminal voltage equals the voltage across external resistor. That means if this is your battery, so let's say, this is, let's say a battery with a, let me put like just AB, let me call it like AB. That's, the, that's, that's my battery. Right, so you can see, right, that my battery here is, you know, um, it has an internal resistor. How much is available to your external resistor? Again, depends on the VT, because since this resistor connected to that point A and B, voltage of A and B is equal to the voltage of the terminal, you know, term, what we call terminal voltage. So this is what we're going to be, you know, same as the load resistance. If you have, you know, multiple resistors, then this terminal voltage will be distributed to, you know, two, three of those, you know, four resistors and, you know, in combination that you have. But the idea here is how much will be available to all of those load external resistors will depend on how much was taken away by the internal resistor of your battery. All right, so let's, let's talk about how I can write, for example, an equation for this particular circuit. Let me do the circuit over here as well. So things like this. So what I have here is I have, this is my EMF source, negative, positive. And then there's an internal resistor, R sub I. So let's say that this is point A, this is point B, but then this is connected to some load resistor R. Okay, some load resistor R. All right. So what we know here is this, VAB is equal to the terminal voltage, okay? VAB is equal to terminal voltage. And this is equals to EMF minus internal resistor, or think like EMF minus the voltage across the internal resistor. So that's equation for the terminal voltage, right? EMF minus internal voltage across internal resistor. That's why the terminal voltage is the difference between how much it makes, how much is taken away. If I rewrite for the EMF, I'm gonna get this, which is basically first writing this terminal voltage equals EMF minus, this is written as current times the internal resistor like that, and then rearrange, and then terminal voltage since terminal voltage is connected to the, is, is, is the voltage of points A and B. And that's exactly same two points that the resistor connected through, right? Then I can say this is equals to voltage across this load resistor. What is voltage across the load resistor? Current times resistance, according to Ohm's law. That means I can say 
the terminal voltage is current times load resistance equals EMF minus current times the internal resistance. That's my equation of this, basically. If I rearrange for EMF, I'm going to get that. If I rearrange for EMF, I'm going to get that. And then I can factor out current load resistance plus internal resistance times current, divide both sides by that, and have an equation for the, for the current. Okay. That means that's the equation for the current in a circuit when you have a load resistor and an internal resistor. So that's EMF divided by load resistance plus internal resistance. That will be you know, the current in the circuit. Now, taking this equation for the terminal voltage, where I can say I times R is equals to EMF minus, or you know, actually let me use this equation over here. So EMF equals load resistance times the current in the circuit plus current times the internal resistance. Now, think like this. If you remember the power, which is the amount of energy generated or dissipated was equals to I squared times resistance or voltage squared over resistance or I times V. So one of those things. Now that means power is equals to current times the, let's say voltage. Well, in this case, I can write this as EMF, which is amount of energy that's generated. So that means if I multiply both sides by current, then this is basically power that is generated, right? I times EMF, power that is generated equals, so then if I take IR times I becomes I squared times R, well, this is then power dissipated or amount of energy dissipated by the external resistor plus I squared times R sub I, which is then how much dissipated by the internal resistor. That's what we have. This is the total power. And this is then you can say power by, you know, uh, of the external resistor plus power by, of the internal resistor and power is what energy this energy you know use up or you know like let's say uh, dissipation per unit time okay that means how much you generate then it's dissipated by the external and internal resistor combined okay so, so that's kind of what we have all right so let's look at an example here a battery has an emf of 15 volts okay that that you can as we can write so that's an emf of the 15 volts then it says the terminal voltage of the battery is 11.6 volts when it is delivering 20 watts of power to an external load, load resistor R. What is the value of R? And what is the internal resistance of the battery? Now, how do we know there's an internal resistance in the battery? Well, how much it generates is not the same how much is available to the external circuit, which is the load resistor. That means we know that that is you know, an example of where EMF and the terminal voltage not equal to one another. So then we can use that to find how much then um, is taken away by the internal resistor. All right, so from here, we can then look at it in terms of, like, let's say what, we, what type of circuit we have, right? So, um, let's see. All right, so here's, here's the circuit that we have. So here's an EMF. Here's an internal resistor. So let's call this point A and B. That means technically this is my battery. And this is connected to a load resistor, which we can call R. Now, then when we make a full connection, then there's going to be a current in the circuit like this. So then the current, you know, will be because there is a power source, right, uh, that connected to a load resistor and there are no gaps. So it's a full connection, closed circuit. So then what you get here is uh, you get basically a current running through your circuit. All right. So what's given to us is this. EMF is 15 volts. Terminal voltage is then 11.6 volts. And we, we're given that uh, a battery, so the terminal voltage on the battery of the battery is 11.6 volts when it is delivering 20 watts of power to an external load resistor. Okay. That means what we're given here 
is that power of the external load resistor is then 20 watts. Okay, so now, since voltage between points A and B is same as terminal voltage, and if I look at, you know, the you know voltage between my resistor, let's say if I put a, some kind of voltmeter and measure potential difference between the, the end of the resistor, I will see that point A is directly connected to the left end of the resistor, point B is directly connected to the right end of the resistor. That means VAB, which is a terminal voltage, is same as voltage across the resistor R. That means that's 11.6 volts. Okay. Now I'm given that power across that for that resistor, right? That means this is the rate at which it dissipates energy. That means it dissipates 20 joules each second. That's what watt, right, is, is joules per second. And this is then the voltage. So I can relate this where power across this resistor load uh, is equals to the voltage squared divided by the resistance. Then I can use this to find the resistance because part A is asking, what is the value of load resistance R? So R is equals to voltage across that resistor divided by the power of that resistor. So 11.6 volts square divided by 20 watts. So then we will get 6.73 ohms. That's then the value of the external load resistor. Part B says, all right, so then what is then the internal energy of the, of the battery? Okay, so for this, the only way I can find that you know, internal resistance is from one equation that we have. So it's EMF equals terminal voltage, right? So the, or, you know, well, the equation that I actually gave you here is, is this, so technically. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so terminal voltage equals EMF minus voltage across the internal resistor, which means that this is, can be rearranged into uh, EMF is equals to terminal voltage plus voltage across the resistance. Because this is how much generates, this is how much, you know, given to the internal resistor, this is how much given to the external resistor. So the, both of, the sum of those two is technically then equal to the amount of total and, you know, uh, voltage generated EMF. Okay, so I know that Voltage, you know, terminal voltage is same as voltage across the resistor R, which is I times R, plus voltage that is between the ends of the internal resistor, then this current times the internal resistance using the Ohm's law. That means again, rearranging those, factoring out the current. So R plus R sub I times current, then I can say that current is equals to um, EMF divided by I, sorry, R plus R sub I, right? Basically from this equation that, you know, I showed you last time. It just, this time what we want, we want to find, solve for the um, internal resistor. Okay, internal resistor. So we don't have the current, so I can't really look at it in terms of this. So let's go back and we can see that, all right, so coming back to this equation over here, EMF equals terminal voltage plus this. So this is gonna be then um, current times resistance plus current times internal resistance. Okay. From here, we're gonna rearrange and just solve for the R sub I. Okay. That means current times R sub I equals then EMF minus current times internal resistance. All right, now I don't have the internal resistance and I don't have the current. So there are two unknowns in this particular uh, equation. Well, there are a number of things we can do here, right? So I have one where the current is equals to the, the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. Okay, so basically, you know, I can use this to calculate the current, because I know that voltage across the resistance is 11.6 volt. Resistance value 
is then, which is calculated 6.73 ohms. So then I can use this to calculate the current. All right, so we're gonna get 1.72 amps. So that's the current. Now, when I come back over here, I can say, all right, so then internal, resist internal resistance equals EMF minus current over times resistance, then divided by the current, then I can get this value. I could have substituted for the, you know, current, you know, using this ratio, but you know, it's basically pretty much the same thing. So this will be equals to 11, well, EMF here is 15, 15 volts minus 1.72 times the 6.73 divided by 1.72. Then internal resistance, we will calculate as 1.97 ohms. And that's the value for the internal resistance. All right. Next, we will look at how we can have resistors in different combinations. So we can have resistors connected just like capacitors, right? We can connect them in series, we can connect them in parallel. So when we connect them in different combinations, the advantage here is that we can gain either increase in overall resistance or a decrease in overall resistance. Because when we put them in combination, if you remember, right, for the capacitors, we got higher value depending on how we can, you know, you know, what the combination we used or a lower value overall, the total capacitance, equivalent capacitance. Uh, and what we had here is this. So if I kind of give you a review of the capacitors, so remember capacitors connected in series to uh, let's say a battery, C1, C2, capacitors in series, what we got here is this. The equation was one over capacitance equivalent is equals to one over C1 plus one over C2, which actually ends up decreasing the total capacitance compared to the other capacitor. That means, you know, if you put, for example, 10 and 10, let's say microfarad capacitors, right? Two 10 microfarad capacitors. If you find the equivalent of putting those two together in series and find, you know, or replace it with the equivalent. So the equivalent will be then five, let's say five microfarad, because it will decrease the overall capacitance. And just what happens when you have a capacitors in, in series. Now, same thing, same combination, right? Series combination we can use, uh, we can do for the, for the resistors. We can put two resistors together. So let's say here, think like this, resistor is some kind of a light bulb because resistor is a device that can dissipate energy. And what exactly light bulb does. It dissipates energy because it will, you know, convert some of the potential energy into the heat energy. So there's a conversion dissipation of the potential energy of the of those atoms. Now again, capacitors in series decrease the capacitance. Let's see what happens when you put two resistors in series. Well, one thing we have is this: if you have those two, so let me put it like in terms of this. So this is point A. This is point B, this is point C, this is point D. One thing we can see here is this, as the current starts from the positive terminal, the current goes through the circuit, through those wires, gets to point A, then go to point B, then go to point C, then go to point D and comes back to the negative and then you know, continues, like basically repeats the cycle. That means the entire time, there's only one path for this current to follow which means that how much current comes out of the battery like this, right? Is same current that goes through the resistor one and same current that goes through the resistor two. So this we can call condition one. The current is constant for any resistors connected in series. You have 10 resistors connected in series. They will all have exactly same current, okay? Exactly same current. Now, if I have two together, if I look at I1 and I2, and then if I put two couple of more resistors together, they all will have the same current, but more, you know, one, one thing we will see is that current value actually will change if you have more resistors in, in series. 
but that's not too much what I'm trying to tell you here. What I'm trying to tell you here is any resistor combination, when you, have, when, when, you, when you put them together in series, all the resistors in series will always have exactly the same current going through them. Okay, that means I is the current leaving the battery, I1 is the current in the resistor one, I2 is the current in the resistor two, and if I, you know, R1 and R2 in series, they're gonna be the same. All right. Then what we can think of is the, like this. So delta V is the potential difference um, between the battery. Like let's say, I can say that this is the, the terminal voltage, right? So this is the terminal voltage. Now this is the voltage given to your circuit, available to your circuit. If you have just one load resistor, it gets all. If you have more than one, then you can't just give you know, all the you know, voltage you have to one resistor. What about the other ones? So what we end up doing here is this. You can see, right, AB is the voltage across resistor one. Let's call this V1. BC is then the voltage across resistor two. Let's call this V2. Then delta V is equals to voltage across resistor one plus voltage across the resistor two. Which means that current one times resistance one plus current two times resistance two, but you know, current still gonna be remembered. It's the same because it's, you know, they're in, in series. So that's basically gonna be the total voltage. That means total voltage is equals to the thing like this. So at total voltage, the battery voltage equals V1 plus V2. That means that will be then distributed. So you have three, three resistors, then it will be V1 plus V2 plus V3. Five resistors, so V1 plus V2, and so on and so forth, right? So you can see, right, more, more resistors we have, more the potential will be distributed to all of them. The total voltage never changes, but then, you know, it just distributes to, the, to those resistors. All right, so that's, you can think like condition two. So condition one is the currents are constant, I1 equals I2. Condition two is that the voltage drop from A to B is the V1, voltage drive from B to C is V2, and their sum is equals to then V total. Okay. So now, then one thing we can do here is this. Since V total, let me put it like this, V total is equals to V1 plus V2, using Ohm's law, where voltage, you can write the voltage equals current times resistance, then this is being V total, then I can say this is same as I times R equivalent, which is R equivalent is total resistance. Replacing those two together with one resistor, then I can say that this is I times R equivalent equals V1 is then I1 times R1, V2 is I times times R2. But again, because the current is the same, total I1 and I2 are all the same, they end up canceling out. Which means if they cancel out, that means my resistance equivalent equals then R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus dot, dot, dot. That means R equivalent is then the sum of your, you know, let's say resistance, right? So let's say like that from I to N. You add them all together. And what means that your, your resistance will increase. So if you put like 10 ohm resistance together in series, let's say three of them, the equivalent then will be 30 ohm resistance. That means we are increasing the overall resistance in the circuit when we put them in series, which is again, different from the capacitors. Capacitors decreased the capacitance in series. Resistance actually does other way around. So the equivalent resistance of series combination is the numerical sum of the individual resistances. It is always greater than any individual resistance. So because you're pretty much adding them all together. All right. So this one increases the resistance. And then we can go back and look at in terms of the other combination, which will be the parallel combination. So this will be like, let's say putting two resistors together. Now, let me show you like sort of circuit diagram. So let's say here's your resistor one and here's your resistor two. The idea is that you are connecting both ends of the resistors like this. So let's say the left ends are connected the right ends are connected. So that's the difference between parallel and series. Series would have been, here's the resistor one, here's the resistor two, 
and they're only connected at one end. Parallel, they're connected at both ends. That means this left sides are connected electrically and right sides are connected. That means if I have a battery, if I connect to anywhere on the left side, let's call this point A, and anywhere to the right side called B, that means one thing you can see here is both of those resistors, R1 and R2, are directly connected to those two points A and B. That means I can say that V1 is the voltage of those points A and B. V2 then is also connected to those points A and B. That means V1 is equal to V2. And in this case, if the battery, right, is also connected to those A and B, then I can say that V1 is equal to V2 equals to the delta, delta V, which is, you know, voltage of the battery. So then this is basically, let's call this condition one. Okay. Both resistors are connected directly across the terminal of the battery because both of them are connected to those points A and B and the potential difference across the resistors are always the same. That means if you have 10 resistors connected in parallel, still if they, because they're connected in parallel, they're all gonna have the same two, you know, let's say points that they're connected to. So they, they all will have exactly the same potential difference. And let's say if the points A and B happen to be connected also to the battery, then that means same voltage that battery provides, right? Is exactly the same as the terminal of, the, of those, uh, the, 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 the voltage of those resistors. All right, so condition one is right here. Then let's look at, you know, what we have for the, for the current. We, we, which you can see, right? Those two conditions that I'm, I'm talking about here is one condition for the current, another condition for the voltage. In, in this combination. So condition one for the series was cur the current constant voltage changes. Here for the parallel voltage is constant. Then you can probably guess what will happen here is the current will change. Because those same those points A and B, just like with the capacitors, those are called junction points. So junction points are points where the let's say the current splits, the wires split into like two or three or four, depending on how complex your circuit is. So in this case, you can see, right? There is from the, from the positive terminal of the battery. So if you move like this, there's one wire until you get to this point A, and then there's a two different paths. So then the current will have, some of the current will go then to the top path, right? Through the resistor one. Then some of the current will go through the, you know, middle path, which is there through the resistor two. That means I is the total current. Then I one is the current through the resistor one. I two is the current through the resistor two. But in this case, their sum, their algebraic sum is equal to the total current. So then I equals I one plus I two. Okay. So this is then condition two. That means current basically is distributed, right? Basic current splits into two. And what you have here is some of it goes through the resistor one, some of it goes through the resistor two. Okay. Now we can combine then conditions one and two together to get the equation for the resistors in parallel. That means those two together in parallel. What are the what is the equivalent resistance? Well, remember the Ohm's law, right? Current is equals to voltage over the resistance. If I rearrange it, I can write it like this. Now, left side of the equation for this you know condition two is the total current well this is then total voltage over equivalent resistance which is total resistance i1 is v1 over r1 i2 is v2 over r2 but condition one was total voltage same as v1 same as v2 because they are connected all of them are connected to those points a and b which means i can cancel the v1 v2 and v total which ends up giving me one over R equivalent is equals to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus that, 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 if I have more. That means this is the equation for the equivalent resistance, which means that overall resistance is decreasing. Okay. Just like capacitors in series, resistors in parallel have the same effect. Put the resistors in parallel, it decreases overall resistance. That means, for example, if this is 100 ohms, this one is 100 ohms, then if I put them in parallel combination like this, then equivalent resistance, I can write it like this, is 1 over 100 plus 1 over 100 to the negative 1 
which is two over 100 to the negative one. Well, two over 100 is 150 to the negative one, or we get 50 ohms. That means the overall effect is 50 ohms, which is, you know, less than individual resistors. So that's kind of what we get. That means because the current splits, I is equals to I1 plus I2, and we can use this, you know, um, to derive the equation for the resistors, okay? So I, then this is the total current, which is total voltage over total resistance, okay? And then we can replace those two with one equivalent resistance, and that was, let's say, 50 ohms, if those two were like 100 ohm each. That means equivalent resistance will be always less than any of the individual resistors connected in parallel. Okay, so this is then more general equation, right? Our equivalent equals R1 plus R2 plus R3, dot, dot, dot. Now, if you have two resistors in parallel or two capacitors in series, you know, you can see right there, capacitors in series and resistors in parallel have the same format equation. Capacitors in parallel have the same format as resistors in series. So if you have just, let's say two resistors, one over R equivalent equals one over R1 plus one over R2, for example. So if I take the inverse of both sides, left side is just R equivalent. The right side I can rewrite is like this, R1 times R2 and R1 plus R2 to the negative one, which then if I do the take the inverse of that, R equivalent is equals to R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. So that's kind of like a shortcut equation if you have two resistors in parallel or two capacitors in series, okay? That's a kind of like a shortcut equation for two resistors. Okay, so you can use that. If you know that you have two resistors, you can calculate that. Anyways, the inverse of equivalent resistance of two or more resistors in parallel combination is equal to the sum of the inverses of the individual resistances. And equivalent resistance is always less than the smallest. That means if you have one, there's 100. The other one, let's say there is two ohms. Well, equivalent, according to this, should be less than even two ohms. And then, you know, once you calculate, you should verify. Because if you, if you have 110, oh, sorry, 100 ohms, the other one is two ohms connected in parallel. Oops, I got RC circuit actually by mistake. So like this. Then if you calculate like 20 or 30, you made a mistake. It should be less than two ohms, which is less than the smallest resistance in the group. All right. So I think we're ready to look at some examples here. So let's consider this circuit over here. And what we want to do here is we want to find the current in the 20 ohm resistor. Okay. Now, what we have here is then this, right? So you, obviously, as we talk about, so we have two resistors in series. That's something we talked about, right? So let's say 10 ohms, 10 ohms. Then you can find the equivalent of this by just saying this R1 plus R2 equals 20 ohms. If I take those and put it in parallel, if this is 10 ohms and this is 10 ohms, and again, I can then use equivalent for the parallel, which is R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2, like that shortcut equation. So let's say 10 times 10 over 10 plus 20 is 20. So which is 100 divided by 20 gives you five ohms. You can see, right? That means you can look at just series or just parallel or put something together that, for example, imagine you take this and you move it here connected to this two parallel. That means you can have something like that and then few of them connected, you know, let's say this is, you know, R1, R2, this is R3, this is R4. That means you can put them in different type of combination like this, mix it up a little bit. And that's what we have over here. So in this particular, you know, let's say circuit, we have several resistors. We have like total of, so one, two, three, four, five resistors. And they're connected such that we need to figure out what are the connections, which ones are connected in series, which ones are connected in parallel, and so on and so forth. So it's probably, let's say, not easy to look at it in terms of the way it's drawn right here, but you can always sort of like a change the way you have the circuit. So for example, one thing we have here is you can, you can look at it in terms of this. So here's the, the two ends of the battery, right? Now, one thing you have, you have this 
resistor 10 ohms, I don't know, for simplicity, let's, let's call this R1. And then this one is R2. And the question is that, are they connected in series or parallel? Well, so technically this one is connected neither series nor parallel with the R2. Because what we have here is that this point A, so technically is the same point as here. Those A and B, right? So technically see this point B is here, but I can put this B here over there because this is just one wire. That same point is same everywhere, same, same voltage. Probably it's easier if you say that this is point B and this is point A, those are junction points. So now R2 connected to those points A and B, R3 connected to those points A and B, but R4 and R5 are not connected to those points A and B, but those two are connected in series and together, if you put you think of them together, they are connected to those points A and B. All right, so that means trying to make sense of what we have is this. And I'm gonna to try to draw it a little bit differently. So here's my battery. So I'm gonna say this is, you know, positive terminal and negative terminal. What I have here is there's this R1. Let's put R1 right here. So this is my R1. Then the battery connected to two points, A and B, right? The battery connect, you know, let's say this positive connected to point B. Let's call this point B, right? But the negative, right? So let's say this negative terminal connected to the resistor one and then the resistor one connected to point a, like this. Now, what I have then R2 is connected to points A and B. So that means I can say that, all right, so then I have one resistor here, which is R2. Then R3 connected to points A and B. That means I can say that this is then R3. Then this R5 and R4 together, which are Together, two, those two are connected in series with one another, but then their combination, right, is connected to point A and B. So I can represent like this. So this is R3, uh, sorry, R4, and this is R5, and they are together connected to point A and B, like that. So this is R4, this is R5. Technically, then, this is my circuit, okay? So you can see, right, it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to see. So what I have is that R2 and R3, you know, individual directly connected to one another in parallel. R4 and R5 in series, but their equivalent, right? So their equivalent is connected in parallel with the R2 and R3, okay? And then this entire configuration, right? This entire combination connected in series with R1. So that's kind of what we have. And then whenever we have, for example, a current, so let me draw the current. So let's say here's a current coming from here. So let's say this is I, which is the, from the battery, comes to here. So this is a junction point. From here, the current will split into three, okay? Some of the current will go here. Some of the current will go through here. And some of the current will go through there. That means we have, you know, let's call this I1, let's call this I2, and let's call this I3. And then what we want to find here is this. What is the current in the 20 ohm resistor? And we can see, right, 20 ohm resistor is basically R4. That means what is the current I3, right? Because I3 is going through the R4. And then what is the potential difference between points A and B? So that means what is the potential difference between those two points? All right, so, and the only thing we're given here is that delta V, which is the battery voltage is 25 volts and we're given all the resistor values, which is, you know, actually quite a lot. Okay, now let's then look at in terms of what we have. This voltage battery is equals to 25 volts. My question is that, is this the same as part B, which says, what is the potential difference between points A and B? Well, not quite, right? Because see, the battery is connected to point B, but it's not connected to point A. There is a resistor between them. 
that means I cannot say that this is VAB. So that would be wrong if you if you take that voltage between point A and B and say this is the same as voltage. It's not. But one thing I have here is this. VAB is basically same as voltage of my parallel combination because all of those things together are connected in parallel and that combination, right, is connected to point A and B. That means voltage of the parallel combination is technically the voltage of point A and B. All right, so we have to then go kind of like a step by step with this one. First will be this. This is technically called a simple circuit, even though we have like, well, a bunch of stuff over there, but this is called a simple circuit. And the reason is because I can take all of those five resistors and combine them together either in series or parallel or all of those together, mix it up, right? And eventually find one single overall resistance. That means that's why this is called a simple circuit. Okay. So that means we need to find a way to combine all this into just single resistor. What we do here is we look at the one that we can work with directly. See, R2 and R3, they're connected in parallel, but also they're connected in parallel with the R4 and R5 combination. That means I cannot find, so that means if I'm looking at, let's say the total resistance between A and B, point A and B, which is parallel, so it becomes like this. One over R A B, which is the, you know, the parallel combination, right, between, it's equals to one over R2 plus one over R3 plus one over, but that's, you know, at the top, I have to find the equivalent of those two together. But it's easy, right? Because equivalent over there is just R4 plus R5. That means this is just, you know, R4 plus R5. Then I can find it. So that means first thing we can do here is maybe go and say that this is my combination one or the, or the diagram one. Then I'm gonna simplify by first finding what's the equivalent at that, at that top. Okay, so that, let's do this. That means this is the battery. This is connected to point A and point B. Then here I have, sorry, there's an R1 right here. So this is R1. So this is then R2. This is R3. And then this is gonna be then R equivalent where four and five together combined. Okay, now I know one thing, right? That four and five is one, four is 20, 20 ohms, five is five ohms. That means this R equivalent is R4 plus R5, which will give me 25 ohms. Okay, so that will give me 25 ohms. That means now I have R2, which is 10 ohms, R3, which is five ohms, and this R equivalent, which is 25 ohms, now all those three together combine, you know, connected to those points and B, so I can say that those three are in parallel. Okay, that means I can just, this, let's call this diagram two. So the diagram three will be then combining those R2, R3, and R equivalent for those four and five together. This will be, here's my battery. Here's points A. Here's my resistor one. Here's my point B. And then now between them, I can combine those, all those resistors that are connected in parallel into, let's call this R equivalent prime. So R equivalent is the four and five together. R equivalent prime is two, three, four, five together, they're all connected in parallel. Okay, now what is R equivalent prime? Well, R equivalent prime will be one over R2 plus one over R3 plus one over R equivalent to the negative one. And I can calculate this, right? So it's one over 10 plus one over five plus one over 25 to the negative one. That means I can combine those together and to get that. One thing we know for sure, see I have one which is five, one which is 10, other one which is 25. 
and value should be less than five. Remember, less than the smallest one. So it's, it's simple enough that I can say, all right, so it's one over five plus one over 10 plus one over 25 to the negative one. We get 2.94. So it's 2.94. That means what I have is this. There's a 10 ohm resistor for R1 and there's a 2.94 ohm for the R equivalent prime, which is two, three, four, five together combined as equivalent. So that's what we get. That might diagram three. Now, from the diagram three, I can then go and actually find diagram four, which is combining R equivalent prime and R1 together because those two now in series, you can see, right? Those two now connected in series because, you know, if I go from the battery, there's always just one path like this. So that means those are connected in series. So I can combine those together into my fourth diagram which is here's my battery. And those two together combined will give me, let's call this R, let's call this R total because that's my complete total resistance. So 10 and 2.94 connected in series. That means well, all I have to do is just add them together. So I get 12.94 ohms. All right, so that means it can be simplified all the way to this. All right, so it can be simplified all the way to this. So those are my diagrams, diagram one, which is the given one, diagram two, which is I combined R4 and R5, diagram three, which is two, three, and four, five together combined into R equivalent prime. And then the fourth one where I combined everything together into a single, you know, a resistor. Okay. So now remember, this is not, this is not what we wanted. So we wanted, what is the current I3? But in order for us to get that, we first can find what is total current I. Because using now that this is 25 volts, I can, and the total resistance in the circuit is 12.94, I can find the current coming out of the battery. Okay, so we have some room over here. I can say that the total current is equal to the total voltage divided by total resistance. So the total voltage is the one that provided by the battery. Total resistance is then 12.94 ohms. So then I can use this to calculate how much current provided by the battery. And that should be then 1.93 amps. Okay, so then that means in terms of what I have here is those are points A and B. This is my battery. Then thing like this. So the current coming out of the battery, this one over here is 1.93 amps. Now remember, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, all right, so let's say if I if I do this. So this is my this was my R total, right? That means what I have here is that this is the current that goes through my R total, which is the total current. But then this R total then is, you know, if you open it up, right, becomes like all the other, you know, everything else together. So if I come back, I can say, all right, so one, I go one diagram before this, basically to the third diagram. My third diagram has this, point A, point B. So this is an R1, and this is my R equivalent prime. This was my third diagram. Now, if I'm looking at then the current going from the battery and then going through the R equivalent prime and then going through the R1, so then sort of the question, what is the current one? And what is the current R equivalent prime? Well, I can see, right? Diagram three tells me that there is just one path going from you know, battery to the, through the equivalent prime and through the R1 that means I can just say that I1 is same as I total because technically R1 is connected in series with the battery, same with R equivalent. That means those two connected in series and connected to the battery. It means I is same, I1 is same as I, which is 1.93 amps. Well, technically I R equivalent prime is also 1.93, but obviously we know that this is a combination of four other resistors. So 
1.93 is just basically what is the current between those junction points. That means the total current going through those junction points. Okay. Now, what I can do here is if I then go one step back again to my diagram three, I can say, all right, so here's my battery. Here's my resistor one. And I already know one thing. How much current do I have through the resistor one? 1.93, because the same current that starts from the battery goes through the resistor one, okay? So then this is then my point A, this is my, my point B, and what I have is this. This is, well, let me actually make it, put it here so I have more space. Point A, point B. All right, so here's my resistor two. Here's my resistor three. And this is then resistors four and resistor five. Okay. So this is my you know very first diagram. Because what I have here is then this. Here's my total current, I. Then I1 goes through the resistor two. I2 goes through the resistor three. Then I, let's say, let me put like here, like let's say I3 and I4. But, you know, I don't really need to do that because remember R4 and R5 are in series and the current going through the R4 and current going to the R5 are the same because those two things are connected in series. So then I just have our I3. And what I needed, the question was asking what is, what is the current through this resistor? That means all I need to do is just find what is I3. Okay, so, so far, the only thing I have here is the total I, 1.93 amps. The question is that, how do we find, how do we go and find what is the I1, I2, and I3? Okay, so in a way, then what we can do here is this. The easiest way to actually do that is to jump sort of like to part B, actually. Because remember, what I have here is now becomes this voltage, total voltage of the battery is equals to, so let's say this is total voltage. It's equal to the voltage between A and B. Because if I look at this diagram two, I can see that with respect to diagram two, I have one combination, which is between A and B and then the resistor one. That means volt, total voltage is a voltage provided to this, you know, junction points A and B and everything, you know, inside it then plus voltage that is you know, given to the resistor one. Well, this is basically one thing I have, I have already this total voltage 25. I don't know what VAB is, but I can calculate voltage through the resistor one of the resistor one, right? Across resistor one. Why? Because I have the value of the resistor, resistor one, right? That was, you know, resistor one was 10 ohms. And now I calculate what is the current through that. So VR1 is equals to the current times resistor one, which will be 1.93 ohms, uh, sorry, 1.93 amps times 10 ohms. That means the voltage across resistor one is just 19.3 volts. That means 25 volts total is equals to how much given to VAB plus how much given to VR1 well, R1 here then has a 19.3 volts across. So then I can say VAB is equal to the, just basically the difference between them, right? Difference between them, which will be five point, um, well, roughly 5.7. So let's say 5.7 volts, which is the difference between those two. That means out of 20, resistor one alone takes the lion's share, like 19.3 volts. 5.7 only is given to this all the rest of the four resistors. Okay. But that's one thing we already have, which means 5.7 volts is the potential difference between those two points A and B, which means that this is the same as V3, same as V4, uh, sorry, same as V2, which is the voltage across resistor two, same as voltage across resistor T three, and that already good enough for me that I can find the current I1 and current I2. 
Now the question, is this also given as voltage across resistor four? Well, no, not quite. Because resi in, you know, resistor four and resistor five, not directly connected to those points A and B. So what we have is that VAB is equal to actually voltage three plus voltage four, because three and four in series connected to that point A and B. All right, anyways, here's then what we can do. I can find I1, which will be just using Ohm's law, voltage across resistor, you know, voltage across resistor two divided by the resistance two. So then 5.7 volts divided by, sorry, yeah, divided by the resistor two and resistance two was 10 ohms. Okay. That means I can calculate this to be, well, 5.7 divided by 10, so 0.57. Zero point five seven amps, okay. and I can say that I two is equals to V V three, right? And then this current two is the voltage across resistor three divided by resistor three. So same voltage, five point seven, but different resistance. And in this, you know, this is five ohms. So five point seven divided by five. So five point seven divided by five gives me one point. One four amps. That's my I two. Now the question is that, how do I find I three? Because I don't know what is the voltage, you know, A or voltage, you know, voltage three, voltage four. But here's the thing. Remember, as the current gets to junction point A, it splits into two, into three, right? That means current I is equals to I one plus I two plus I three. The algebraic sum of current one, two, and three together is what equals to the total current. Well, I have total current. I have I1, I have I2. All I have to do is just say I3 is equals to I1, sorry, I minus I1 minus I2. Okay. So let's calculate that. I3 is equals to, well, I1 is 1.93 amps. I1 Sorry, I is 1.93, I1 is 0.57, I2 is 1.14. If I calculate that, then I will find the current through the, you know, path three, right? Where we have R4 and R5. And this should be uh, basically the difference between them. So 1.93 minus 0.57 minus 1.14 we get 0 0.22 amps, okay. That means two things we wanted to do is find the voltage between points A and B. Let's do that, right? So we wanted to find the voltage between points A and B, which is 5.7 volts, and find the current going through the, you know, 20 ohm resistor, which is resistor four, and that's the I3 going through that resistor four, which is 0.22 amps or, or 22 milliamps or I mean 220 milliamps. All right, so you can see, right? So there are you know, a lot of steps if you have a little more you know, resistors put together like this. Okay. Here's one more example. This is also like an interesting example because you know, we mix it up a little bit, you know, make it a little bit interesting by putting one of the resistors actually in water. All right, so in the circuit shown, a 20 ohm resistor is inside a 10 gram of pure water that is surrounded by an insulating styrofoam. If the water is initially at 10 degrees Celsius, how long will it take for its temperature to rise to 58 degrees Celsius? All right, so what was going on here? So how can we use that, you know, resistance values and things like that to figure out how long it will take for the temperature to increase, you know, for the water? Well, it actually makes, should make a lot of sense because remember resistor, if you have a current running through that, well, it takes some of the potential energy of those charges, right? Of those, you know, flow of charges, right? Of those charges and converts into heat. Well, if you have a resistor with the current running through that, so when it converts, you know, potential energy to heat, it starts warming up, it starts becoming hot. As it becomes hot, then you have hot object inside water 
then it you know loses its energy to water and water gains that energy and starts increasing its temperature. And that's kind of what we have, right? How do you, you know, uh, warm water? You put some kind of something, you know, a filament or something like that, that basically can warm it up. So that's what we have. That means what we need to do here is calculate um, basically the amount of energy, right? That this resistor inside water dissipates. That means what is the power of that resistor, which is amount of energy, you know, dissipates as a function of time. And then we can figure out how much energy will be gained by water. And then we can tell that we can say that if we have how much energy, then we can calculate that. All right. So let's kind of put you know everything together. So if the water initially 10 degrees Celsius, that means we're given initial temperature of water. And then final temperature, 58 degrees Celsius. Remember, and it's a hundred gram of water. The idea is that the energy that will go into increasing the temperature of, of water is given by the Q is equals to mass of water times specific of water times delta T, right? This is from thermodynamics, Q equals MC delta T. And this Q is just basically amount of energy, okay? So this Q is amount of energy gained by water. And that's exactly the same amount of energy that will be dissipated by a resistor from this equation. Um, P is equals to I times R, or I squared times R, because Q is nothing but power, power times time, because remember, and you know, the power is energy per unit time, in this case, energy in the form of heat per unit time. So you can see how those things are related to one another. All right, that means our goal will be this, in order to calculate the power that dissipated by 20 ohm resistor, we need to find the current going through that resistor because we already have its resistance value. So if I have the current going through that resistor, then I can find that. Now let's see what we have in our circuit. We have a bunch of resistors combined together, but here's what I have. So let's call those two points over here, point A and point B. Why? Because those two are junction points. So what I have here is this, I have, here's my resistor 20 ohm resistor connected to this bunch of resistors that are combined together into this, you know, between those points A and B. So then this combination connect, you know, co connected to the 50 ohm resistors in series. That means what I have is that this com you know, this resistor is in series with this one and in series with everything together in parallel between A and B. That means what I can do here is this. I can say, all right, so here's my 20 ohm resistor, and this is points A and B. And what I can do, I can find the equivalent between those points A and B because they are all connected such that I can find the you know, equivalent. So let's say R equivalent. And this is then connected to this five ohm resistor. It means in a way I have this you know, 20 and five connected in series and connected in series to the R equivalent. And this is then 30 volts of you know, EMF. All right, so then let's see what we have. Obviously we're given 20, we're given five. Now what is an R equivalent? That's one thing we need to find. And there are a bunch of them, but it's still not that difficult to, you know, to understand how we can find the resistor between A and B, right? Total resistance between A and B. If you, if you can see that in terms of how they're connected. So let's see what we have. There are three different paths, middle, bottom and a top. Right, so technically that's what you have. The middle one, you're given two resistors, 10 and 10. The bottom one, two resistors, five and five. And the top, two resistors, 10 and 10. This is between A and B. Now the top resistance is in parallel with the middle and the bottom ones. But we wanna find what is the total resistance at the top but there are two resistors in 10 and 10. So that means that's just a combined together of 20, right? The middle one, you have another 10 and 10 in series and total together is another 20. Bottom one is five and five, total together is then 10. Then what you end up with between A and B, you have three resistors now, right? 20, 20, and 10. Well, we can combine them together again by saying that equivalent is just all three together in parallel. 
which is one over 20 plus one over 20 plus one over 10 to the negative one. That's my R equivalent. All right, so let's find that. So if you do the calculation, one over 20 plus one over 20 plus one over 10 to the negative one. I get five. That means all those together, just five ohms. You can see, right? All these together give you total of only five ohms. Okay. That means now I can come back here and I can say, right, you know, between A and B, I have just five ohms. Now what I have, I have three resistors, 20, five and five together in series. All I have to do is just find the equivalent all together because one thing I have here is this. See those in this diagram, 20, this 20, this five, they were already in series. Now they're already also in series with this parallel combination. That means if I have a current coming from here, the same current will flow through all of those resistors, which is same as the total current. So I can find that total current by combining those three together into a single resistor of, well, it's 20 plus five plus five. So this is then 30 ohms, right? And then finally I can calculate my total resistance or total current. And the voltage is 30 ohms, sorry, 30 volts. And you can see, right? The total current is total voltage over total resistance, which is 30 over 30 which is one amps. That means that's my total current. And that's the same current going through this 20 ohm resistance. Well, remember, in order for me to calculate the power, I needed that current. And I just got that current because I already have the resistance. So then I can say that this is equals to one amp squared times 20 ohms. So then the power here is 20 watts. Okay. So then what do I do next? Well, I come back and I say that here's an equation that I need. Q is equals to P times T. That means the amount of energy that is absorbed by water is equal to the power, which is the energy dissipated by the resistor times time, rearranging this and time is equals to Q over T. Okay, what is Q? Q is mass of water times specific of water times delta T divided by the, so this is power, divided by the power, you know, of the resistor. Okay, so let's calculate that here. Time is equals to mass of water 0.1 kilogram, converted to kilogram. Specific of water is 4190 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Change in temperature is from 58, it's from 10 to 58, so final minus initial. So it gives us 58 degree, 48 degrees Celsius and divide by 20, which is the, the, the power dissipated by the resistor. Time is equals to 1.01 .01 times 10 to the three seconds, which is roughly 1000 seconds. There you go. So that's in a way, it's kind of like, you know, combining a couple of things that you already learned together and making a connection because in order to heat up the water, you needed energy. Well, you can use that energy, you know, or, you know coming from a resistor because a resistor, when it get, becomes hot, it can, you know, give off that energy and water can use that energy to increase its temperature. All right then. <laughs>